Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 18. Um, continuing from the lecture 17, so we're gonna solve the CPG problem in two-dimensional space. Um, if you remember, let's go back to the problem setting. So this is the our problem setting. So we have a dam here. And there's an upstream with a 12.5 meter water height and uh, there's downstream 0.5 meter and datum is set at the lower water surface and there's a perfectly drawn the flow net so we have you no know, flow lines two flow lines and one two three four five five equal potential line so then how many channels we have three channels and the uh, number of drops are from here one two three four five six six equal potential drops all right then uh, can we compute the pole pressure and effective stress at point m and f where is the point m point m is here and point f is here and do we know the depth of them yes so 10 meter deep at point m and point f is the 5 meter deep also, the, the saturated density is given, 2,000 kg per cubic meter. So using this density profile and the depth of you know, the point of interest, then we can compute the portal pressure and effective stress. Um, so let's see how we can compute the total head first. Uh, so then uh, total head calculation, uh, we know that the number of drop Ne is 6. And the total head difference between the upstream and downstream of the water inlet and outlet is 12 meter. Um, so the delta small h is 2 meter. So head loss per drop. And at A, here, total head will be what? 12 meter. The reason is that at the surface, the elevation has 12 meter. And the pressure head is 0, so the total head will be 12 meter. So at a also the total head is 12 meter right um, at point g what's the uh, um, total head it's gonna be zero right because here the pressure head is zero and the elevation is zero so and you don't have head loss from here to the point g so the total head will be zero so then from there you know when you look at this channel you can kind of stretch out to be a linear or just you no know, straight soil column right so then you no know, each equal potential drop you have you no know, same head drop so if you divide it into six drops it's gonna be like 12 over 6 so it's gonna be two meter drop and another two meter drop two meter drop two meter drop and two meter drop and then it becomes zero so then you no know, we can you no know, intuitively uh, we can know that we know that the from 12 10 8 6 4 to 0 will be the total head of each point here so very simple um, at a total head is 12 meter and at g total has 0 at b that's gonna be 10 meter because just there's only one drop left and uh, one drop passed um, if we uh, derive the equation then delta capital H minus delta small h times number of drops the water passed. Then 12 minus 2 meter times 1 because you know there was only one drop. Right? Or you can say that the delta H times you know, number of drops left. Here at point B, number of drops are left five num five drops are left. Huh? One, two, three, four, five. So two times five is gonna be ten. At C, no, you can estimate total head at point E four meter. F is two meter. At G will be zero meter. And when you look at here on the same equipotential line, because at two meter uh, at B it was two meter. 
So h will be also the h t will be 2 meter and at n or at n here the total head will be not 2 meter sorry the 10 meter 10 meter 10 meter so on the same equipotential line h t at b total head at location b h m n right b h m n they will have the same total head, which is 10 meter. And F, what about F here? F will have a total head of 2 meter. Right? And this will be the same with the total head at L. So, right? Okay. Move on. So then, can we compute the uh, uh, stress at point M? Here, point M is this location. And if we can keep this picture together, yeah. HT is 10 meter, and elevation head is how much is it? Is it it's from here, so it's 10.5 huh? minus 10.5 meter. So the pressure head will be HT minus HE, so 10 minus 10.5, 10 minus minus 10.5, so that's going to be 20.5 meter. And when you think about the, the water depths, you know, if the water doesn't move, then that's 12.12 12 plus 10 meters. So if it's static, 12.5 plus 10 meters, so H water will be 22.5 meters. So here it's less than the static case because you no know, water is moving downward. Huh? So this is. Less than the static case. So then we can compute the uh, water pressure, which is HP times gamma W. So 20.5 meter times 9.8 kilonewton per cubic meter. And this will give you 200.9 kilopascal. And what about the total head, a uh, total stress? Total stress is, you know, you can compute from the water column and the overburden layer weight. So then 12.5 meter times 9.8 kilonewton per cubic meter plus 10 meter solar thickness. So 10 meter times 2000 kilogram per cubic meter times 9.8 meter per square second and if you compute this is 318.5 kilopascal so then effective stress will be sigma minus uw so sigma minus uw this will be the effective stress and where's the water pressure? This will be the water pressure. And because the water pressure is less than the static case, the effective stress will be larger than the static case. Huh? So this will be larger than the Where the water does not flow. Um, at point F, also you can compute the same way that we did in the uh, point B. So I'll leave it up to you. 
and let's move on to the next page so then we can also compute can calculate the estimated pressure underneath the dam so here we have h i j k l which is the location with the equal potential line starting uh, then we know the total head at point h i j k l and we also know the elevation head because that's the distance from the datum so that's minus 0.5 meter so then we can compute the uh, calculate the pull pressure head at these points so then we'll be able to calculate the uh, pull pressure at you know underneath the dam you know, at the you know, bottom floor of the dam that's lifting up so then here total head from h 10 8 6 4 2 and h is the same as minus 0.5 meter and then you can estimate the pressure head from these two also you can you know easily calculate the water pressure by multiplying the uh, gamma w here so then what's the uh, total uplifting force so here at h we have 103 about right one point uh, 102.9 kilopascal so 103 kilopascal and j h h i j k l and here 83 here 64 44 25 and it will increase like this right. so then if you know the length of the soil uh, length of the dam the upward uplifting force will be over the length of the dam pour the pressure distribution you can integrate over the length huh? and then you can compare the weight of the dam so if the uplifting force is bigger than the weight of the dam then the dam will be lifted and also it's going to slide down because of the water pressure here yeah. so the pressure is quite huge in this direction comparing to here so that if this one lifting up then it's going to slide and you know that's also considered as a failure so you don't want that what about the rotation so here the force is bigger so then you know it can rotate this direction right and we have to check the momentum stability to check the momentum stability uh, at every point along the length we have to make sure that the stress because of this weight of the dam is bigger than the portal pressure so then the, you will be safe against the um, rotation of failure okay um, okay next topic is to check the quick condition how do we check the quick condition or soil erosion in this kind of uh, geometry with the dam so here we can compute the hydraulic gradient over the length because we know delta small h delta small h here is 2 meter and if the flow path length is given then we can calculate the hydraulic conductive hydraulic gradient i and compare it with the hydro, critical hydraulic gradient ic so that's the concept here so from f to g total head difference is 2 meter so and the length is 5 meter which is the shortest length then hydraulic gradient is 2 meter over 5 so that's 0.5 and we can calculate the critical hydraulic gradient from this density saturated density so the rho set minus rho w over rho w which is you know, 2000 minus 1 minus 1000 over 1000 so it becomes 1 then we can calculate the factor of safety factor of safety is 1 over 0.4 so it's 2.5 which is larger than 1 so we can conclude that this is safe against the quick condition but when you look at this triangle shape of element here you can see that the 
flow path. So along here is the total head is zero, and along this equipotential line, total head is two meter. Um, here is five meter, but you can see that you know as toward this this direction, length decreases. So that the i increases at some point, the factor of safety will be less than one. So uh, you cannot uh, uh, have that. So you have to do something to increase the length of the flow. So shoe or sheet pile can be installed to increase the flow path length. For example, we can have a shoe like this, and you know, with this kind of concrete block, the flow path will change like this. Before it was just like this, right? But so then you are increasing the flow path length by this much, and then for a given hydraulic uh, head drop, the total head drop is two meters, still the constant, but you have a L increased so that the hydraulic gradient will be decreased. Okay, um, so last topic that we're going to cover in this lecture is piping. Piping is not same with quick condition. This is quick condition. So the, the basic mechanism, the effective stress goes to zero, is the same, but the, uh, normally the piping is called when you have a uh, uh, this kind of excavation site and ship pile wall, and quick condition is you know kind of uh, for the surface only. Yeah? Uh, when you have a so let me show you the ship pile. You see at uh, these like, assembles assembled wall is called a ship pile. And uh, it can block the water like this. So inside you can uh, have a dry condition to work with. Uh, outside, you know, you have a water. So this wall can be waterproof. And same, right? So inside you can work, you know, with the lower water surface. So then, piping is the term applied to an unstable condition that occur in a soil mass when the upward CPG pressure of the water is equal to the submerged unit weight of the soil above it. Therefore, it represents the effective stress at the region being zero. So, here, upward CPG pressure becomes the same with the submerged unit weight of the soil above it. And then what is the piping area? So where do we look at? So here, if this is the ship pile wall and the inside and outside the water will flow like this, then the, this red rectangle area that the penetration depth D and the width of the half of that is called the piping area. So it's been found that in the case of a ship pile wall, piping is most likely to occur within a distance of d over 2, half of the penetration depth from the ship pile, and when the d is the penetration depth of the pile. So this rectangle area is critical area against piping. So let's compute, uh, let's look at the uh, total downward force and the total upward force. Eh? Um, total, let me use the blue pen here. Total F down at AB. So here, this, is, this red rectangle is the piping area. And uh, we are looking at the AB and the upward force and downward force, and downward force will be what? The, the weight of the soil. So 
H2. You see that this is the water and this is the H2. And here is D. And then H2 times gamma W plus D times gamma Z times and the area is what d over 2 times 1 so this is the area and this is total stress and the upward force is what? water pressure acting on the plane AB so water pressure uw times d over 2 times 1 meter when the water pressure is hp times gamma w then total head across the the plane ab is ht delta capital H over number of drop, number of total equal potential drop, time NAV. So here NAV is what? Number of drops left between plane AB and CD. So remember that here is the water exit, right? And the water is going, you know, bottom to top. So that if there's a this kind of a equipotential drop, and you know, by computing the how much, how many drops left, you can calculate the uh, total head at the plane AB. And uh, you know, depending on the um, the shape of the equipotential line you may have different numbers so you want to get the average drops average number of drops left between plane a b and c d so then the second is you have to get the pressure head which is h t minus a e h e so here the h e is what here's the datum so the elevation head at the a b will be h2 plus d so delta h and d and So from here we can compute the uh, pore water pressure. So from here, U W will be gamma W times delta H over N D times N A V plus gamma W times H T plus D. So you can see that this component is the CPG component. And this is just a static case. Huh? So if there's no seepage water flow, the, the pore water pressure will be like this. Huh? HD plus D times gamma W. So then when uh, F down, the total downward force is the same with the upward force. Down. From here, uh, we have this equation and we have this equation together so then gamma w delta h and d and a v plus gamma w h plus d d over 2 equals h2 gamma w plus d gamma set d over 2 and um, we can 
cancel this h2 comma w h2 comma w and we can use d here to move it to the right hand side so then comma w delta h and d and a v d over 2 is gamma set minus gamma w and d time d over 2. So when you look at this rectangle region, this is the CPG force. The, this term is the CPG force. acting on the plane AB and uh, this is the uh, submerged weight acting on the plane AB so you know, just as we said here huh? so over CPG pressure is equal to the submerged unit weight of the soil so then uh, from that we can uh, divide the Factor of safety. So net word force, the force due to the submerged density of the soil on plane A B. That's gamma Z minus gamma W times D and D over two. And here CPG pressure on the plane A B times area of the plane A B is gamma W delta capital H n d time n a v time d over 2 right so cpg pressure on a b is the same with the average total head on the a b time gamma w and the uh, n a v is the average total head on a b um, the average number of head drops remaining between the plane a b and the plane c d then finally we can get the factor of safety so here gamma z minus gamma w time d time d over 2 over gamma w times delta capital H and this will cancel out so Final equation will look like this for the piping condition. Okay, um, so using this equation, we're gonna solve the examples in the class. This one. Okay, thank you all, and I'll see you guys on the lecture.